couple of months from now, the Yamaha Tenere 700 will be released in Australia. Some of the first people in the queue to buy this new bike will be the riders known as the Tenere Tragics. This group is a devoted bunch of adoring, loyal, committed Yamaha Tenere riders who, for the past nine years, under the leadership of Andrew Club, aka the captain, catch up for a week-long couple of thousand kilometre navigational ride. Note, no GPS. No, it's all done on route sheets. Oh, very clear, concise and unmistakable. No confusion. I'm tagging along for the week on a Yamaha Super Tenere to discover what these Tenere tragics are all about. I catch up with the captain at his headquarters a week out from the ride. Final planning is underway, but time to reflect on what drives his passion for the mighty Tenere. But there's just so much history of the Dakar Rally and Yamaha participation in the Dakar that led them to the Tenere. Just, it's just awesome history, and this, that's what we love, the tragics love, you know. All of us relate to this, all this sort of R&D development of the old original XTs that gave birth to the Tenere. And now, here, look, it's, it's 35 years later, and we're finally, and I say finally, quite literally, we've got the new Tenere 700 coming, which again, it's still wearing that same tank badge. Yeah, oh, here we go, first, first Tenere. 1982 it was unveiled, there you go. Hey, this is Hubby. He's doing some maintenance. Oh, crikey. Ultra heavy duty tubes. You've got to love the way that natural rubber weeps here over time, don't you? When the first model came out with the big fuel tank, 30 litre fuel tank, long travel suspension, rear carry rack to, to carry all your luggage and provisions, I mean, it broke new ground, but that's what we call an adventure bike now. This was an adventure bike before there were adventure bikes. And it's basically, this is what it's all about for me. For guys that are core tragics, this first model, it's like the holy grail, of course, of the whole Tenere tragic mystique. So people ask me, Clubby, why are you just so keen on Tenere's? What's, what's it all about? And in my career as a, a magazine um, journalist, editor, publisher, my first jobs were with uh, Jeff Eldridge, legendary publisher of ADB magazine. And back in, it would be 83, 84 when the Tenere first came out, he and Murray Watt, Honest Muzz, headed out to Western New South Wales to test review, test ride review the Tenere. And I just remember seeing the story in Finnish Story in the magazine, and Jeff got these fabulous images of Muzz wheel standing this big fat tank trail bike through a flooded causeway, bow wave of water in the background, and it just looked awesome and like a picture is worth a thousand words and I thought man that's I, I'd love to do that riding on that bike and it just stuck a nerve with me and it took 15 20 years later before I got one but my, my, my most prized possession out there in the shed is my 83 model XT 600 ZL Tenere. Hey, hey mate. Oh, hey. He started through that. Hey. Did he? Hey. He's snoring. Hey Archie. Mate, we're doing business. Hey, wake up. That's good. Mate, the snoring's killing us. Hi, my name is Gary Ben. Uh, I currently work for CDR Yamaha Monster. Uh, this is my XTZ 750 uh, Super Tenere. Have a look at it. Hi, I'm Cole Hayden from Dubbo. I've uh, been every single year of the Tenere Tragics, ninth year. Uh, this is my project bike, 2011 uh, Tenere 660. Uh, I've had it for not quite 12 months. Started off as a pure black bike. Um, just slowly progressed and added a few little uh, Farkles as the, uh, the captain calls it, and um, yeah, here she is, and uh, ready to go for 2019 trip. Right, hi, I'm Dave Redford, I'm from Dubbo, I'm a Tenere Tragic from a long way back. Uh, this is one of my Tenere's, it's a, nine, a 2016 Super Tenere 1200, and uh, I love Tenere's. My name is Charlie Theron, I'm from Adelaide. Uh, this is my 1988 uh, Yamaha Tenere Model 3AJ, 
So it's 30 years old, it's on historic rego, uh, it's been a labour of love for the last 12 months and this is its first hit out. Yeah. My name is Matt from Melbourne, this is my 83 10 row. It's a ground up rebuild, nut and bolt, engine, whole body, complete. Love it. There was one thing on the minds of the tragics when Yamaha public relations guru Sean Goldhawk got up to speak at the welcome dinner. Where's that bloody Tenere 700? We're working behind the scenes to prepare the Tenere 700 for you blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Sean certainly has got the message from the Tragics. They want their Tenere 700, and they want it now. Jesus here, he's got news on the 700, that'll make you cheer. Come on! Welcome to Tanero Tragics. Today's the training day. We're about to take the new Tragics out on the on the trail a little bit, just to have a set stop and do a bit of training today. So it should be fun. When we're cornering in the seat position to do with our weight distribution, important to have subtle movements to get more emphasis on the tyres. That subtle movement, let's say we're doing a left hand turn. We steer in, is just move ourselves forward and out. And what, why we always have the elbows out is both for flexibility on the machine and for strength. When our elbows are out, we've got much more strength. What a lot of people do wrong too, is when they hit logs, is they leave their weight back. They get their weight back, lift the front wheel and just stay right back. And then what happens? The back of the seat comes up, whack in the bum, over the bars we go. So it's really, really important as you lift to transist as you go across to the middle so the bike pivots underneath you. Great privilege to spend the day with Australian motocross legend Stephen Gall and listen to his riding and training tips. His passion for his sport and love of motorcycling is as strong as ever. We return back to Tragic Headquarters and discover a new recruit who has just picked up a rare classic. So it's not every day of the week I arrive at a brand new Tenere Tragics run and blow me down a 1983 600ZL Tenere arrives unannounced, not on the entry forms, not on the entry. Shane, the owner, was on the entry form. The bike isn't. I turn around today, it's another 83 first model Tenere, which is just awesome. And everyone I'd like to meet, Shane, you're going to meet Shane from Longreach. Shane, tell me the story behind how you're here for the event and on an 83 Tenere out of everything. A bloke in uh, Toowoomba needed had a change of life. Right, scenario, okay. Sort of Wanted to let go of a classic. Didn't really yeah. want to let go of it. Oh, right. But yeah. needed money sort of thing. Yeah. So he put it up for sale. Uh, and I was very interested and I said, yeah, I'll take it. And sight unseen. Now, I know you're busting your guts to have a look at this ride. But before we head out, we need to go back and talk to the captain to get a better understanding of how the tragics roll. And why the hell are they still using root sheets when we all have GPS? It's like we've gone back to the 70s. Here's this um, stone tablet cup, clubby. Stone in a box. tablet? The stone tablet. It's from the box. Roman era, that's right. Yes, the Roman era. Yeah, they're in a box. Very clear, concise and unmistakable. So the format for our, our tragic run, it's basically like a safari style, style ride is what I like to call it. We go to a different town each night the riders carry all their own luggage. The riders are also self-sufficient with flat tyres, breakdowns, incidents, in that I ask them all to have their own tubes, have their own spares, have their own tools, know how to use them is the other big point, of course. But then, of course, we also have a sweep crew as well. We have two sweep riders, Clive and Troy are the sweep riders on bikes, and then we have Dave in a support uh, chase four-wheel drive and trailer 
to pick up any breakdowns or any incidents. I'm, I'm, I'm a paper maps kind of guy, old school. Love them, don't go anywhere without them is my motto. And also route notes for the navigation. Yeah, so no GPS route here. We're old school. I've got guys on 35 year old almost bikes. I've got guys that are 65 years old that can barely operate a mobile phone, let alone try and program a GPS unit. This is what works for the Tragics. And this is how we do it at the Tragics. And this is what we'll continue to do in the Tragics. Mr. Sweeps. Quality crew. Yeah, <laughs> Day one, and for our international friends, we start this ride at Cessnock, a couple of hundred kilometres northwest of Sydney, near the east coast of Australia. We're heading west from Cessnock to Bathurst, with a total of 403 kilometres to cover. During the day, we'll traverse the Great Dividing Range. Keep If you like challenging terrain in your rides, then the Tragics isn't for you. This is about what the captain calls Tenere goodness. Flowing tar, dirt trails and roads through rural Australia. Equally, it's about sharing a meal and a coffee, renewing friendships and fellowship, and the sharing of the passion of motorcycling on a Yamaha Tenere. How's it going? Yeah, real good. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't get any better than this. How many of these have you done? Uh, this will be seventh one. Oh, wow. Yeah, all on this bike. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're a real tragic. And everyone on that. Yeah, all on this bike. Everyone yeah. on that. It's amazing. Well, you call it tragic or just sad. I know what I get, Marta. <laughs> Half the day, the country started to open up on the western slopes of the Great Divide. The flowing dirt roads made their way through rolling hills of grasslands. This is the sort of country that epitomises the captain's description of Tenere goodness. I settled in behind the captain and Lance on my Super Tenere. Our first day was coming to an end and I reflected on the experience. I had enjoyed the route sheet navigation. And better still, I was enjoying my Super Tenere. From my usual experience of adventure riding, it had been an easy day, but nevertheless a satisfying and fulfilling one that had put a smile on my face. Our overnight stay at Bathurst would not be complete without a visit to the famous Mount Panorama racetrack. And as I rode around carefully maintaining the 60 km per hour speed limit, I wondered how many tragics would succumb to the temptation to crack open the throttle. What's going on over there? Mate, what's happened? Well, uh, we have a uh, intermittent fault, All right. uh, which was troubling me, troubling me yesterday, and um, with a bit of help from Clive, We've just found the uh, cause, which is a uh, loose battery terminal. So ah. it's as simple as that. So, ah, so uh, you've, you've, you're no longer, a, you're still a tragic Tenere. I, I, am a, I live to fight another day. Right. A variety of roads between a little bit of bitumen, a lot of smooth uh, and right. sandy gravel roads. So enjoy the day. Excellent. Day two, and we're heading south from Bathurst to Goulburn for a total distance of 380 kilometres. We start the day with some dust, 
but an afternoon shower lifted our spirits as track conditions became ideal. Great start to the day. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice and cool. Doesn't that smell beautiful? Sitting in sheep country, isn't it? Yeah. The smell of sheep in here. <laughs> Sweet grass. Yeah. Tell me, how's the Tenerife going? Oh, they're fantastic. Coming along beautifully at this time of the morning. No problems yet. <laughs> Navigation's good so far. How's your navigation going? Awesome. A little, uh, Yep. Roll it here. You're resetting? Well. Yep. Love your work. Thank you. I found boxes of first CDs Trying to get my office clean Took ten years of folks giving them to me Till I sat down And I saw Poses and torn up jeans In cover photos friends took for free For the six minute song and all their lifelong dreams The world turned down And they're just dreaming of some life out on the road Dead left off the causeway And all I dream about today I long forgotten how it feels to chase a dream. Thank God for boxes of first seed. Yeah. On through this roll of decks of railroad tracks and fresh cut hair. I see Joy who won some Grammys and is now a millionaire. Looks different now than she does right there That's how it goes As for the rest, I bet their teachers are pastors now Pictured in jackets, girlfriends picked out All their hometowns turn lead up All the labels turn them down and never wrote whoa, whoa, whoa. They're just dreaming of some life out I forgot the way it feels to chase a dream Thank God for boxes and first CDs Yeah a Thrift store jacket and ten less pounds Looking like a fool in some big field With my bare feet on the ground Yeah, good was that right? Oh. <laughs> Woo! How was today? It was good. We had a ball in the rain. Yeah. Got wet, got cold. At least the mud's not slippery down here for some reason. Oh, you're looking pretty relaxed there. Yeah, why not? Did you have a good day? Yeah, been a good one. Yeah, been a good event so far. It looks like a tragic... <laughs> <laughs> tragic. Very tragic. What is that? That's a tragic oil fund. Definitely a tragic oil fund. Wouldn't have these dramas if I had a new 700. Super Tanneray 700. If it works, you know, I'll be shocked. 100,000 people will see this. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. Don't put your name to it. Josh. My name's Matt Halpin. <laughs> Here we go. It's working. Shockingly. That's tragically good. <laughs> How's the day been? Crappy dusty this morning, absolutely sublime this afternoon after some rain has made the roads absolutely brilliant. <laughs> nice and grippy. With cooler weather, brilliant sunshine and no dust, day three from Goulburn to Tumut was shaping up to be 442 kilometres of Tenere goodness.
good at telling stories suspension problem here. Hopefully they'll get underway very shortly. So what did you notice mate? You just started slowly sagging into the... No, my rain jacket went into the back wheel <laughs> <laughs> and I locked up and then uh, Geezer and myself and another chap were uh, busy cutting the, uh, the rain jacket out and we just noticed there was nothing on the back wheel. And it was... So it's basically it's just slowly sinking into the sunset. I think so. It, just, it probably just unloaded before beforehand before the jacket went into the back wheel. And... Mate, that that bloody piece, Steve, with us, the three of us dicing around. Mate, I tell you what, I, I'm just so happy at the moment because the weather is perfect. The, it's cool, and and that traction is just great. These these big machines are just so fun to ride, and and it's good. That, you know, when you ride with someone who's at your pace. Um, you do, and we're, we're in communication with our centre, so Laurie's just, what's that, what's that? He, he, every time he passes the new scenery, he goes, oh, we're back in BC or we're in Mongolia. <laughs> but that was fun this morning, wasn't oh, it, Laurie? Yeah, yeah, it was really good this morning. Yeah. It's a really cool section. Yeah. What, what was that hill climb like, Laurie? You like that? Oh, that was fantastic. It was just perfect for these big bikes. He's still smiling. You know, like they're not cursing or sweating. It's like, oh, get out of here. It was just fun. It was perfect. Yeah. It's really cool, yeah. Hi. How's you go today? Oh, it's been a brilliant day. Uh, some, some wonderful tracks, some really uh, technical steep uphills with some absolutely mint dirt. Um, so we've been riding from uh, Goulburn, going through to Tumut today, currently in Murrumbaton.
half drive. Yeah. yeah, can you see it? Yeah. yeah. You're on the clock, bud. Jesus. Oh, oh God. <laughs> That's a blowout. That is a blowout. You know what it probably was? <laughs> probably wasn't that you hit anything. Check this out. It's their super heavy duties and they get too hot. Oh, oh really? Them. He's a bloody blowout champion. No wonder it went down quick. <laughs> Day four, and we're heading from Tumut to Kuma for a total distance of 369 kilometers. The captain tragically displays perseverance and determination as he brings his older machine to life. Oh, oh, oh. Dead center, right there. That's tragic. Are you sure you don't, don't want us to push it? I'm sure of that one. Okay. Right. Hey Lance, guys, just have you come back. I just can't get around. Yep, I want to get his face. Is the fuel on? What time are we leaving? <laughs> you need to put it on reserve, didn't you? Because you know you've only got two litres in here. It's on reserve. Yeah. He's giving it a tickle. Oh! oh! Oh, <laughs> no good to have you along today. Hey, good, thanks, mate. What are you riding? I think we stole him Clubby 660 here, so oh, I'm no. not sure what he's going to end up with, but um, I'm happy about it anyway. I'll get a bit of good gear. <laughs> Couple, Bobby. Gotta be a couple. Trout, eh? Trout. Trout, yep. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? What, what, oh, are you a tragic gonna... fisherman or something? Yes, I'm just gonna see if we can catch a trout in the river here, so it looks like a good spot. I need a bit of a break. So. Hey, well, I'm just thinking, there's four T's in our world, right? So Tenere's, Tragics, Custard Tarts, Definitely on the list there. And what about trout, you know? We're belting over the bridge over here, above the Brindabella River. And Shadow looked down, saw a trout. And he said, that trout will be mine. So let's see how he goes with a couple of casts, eh? Snag. I'm just getting the snag out for him. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, looks like a fish story to me. So, mate, Clubby took 25 kicks to get his Tenere <laughs> going today. So, can you can you just show Clubby how, how it's done? Well, there's one or two options. It tends to stop on the right spot. So, if you fang it the first time, sometimes it starts. If it doesn't, it's another five kicks. Well, if you get it done in six kicks, that's five times better than clubby. So let's, let's see. Let's see how you go. So, clubby, take that. <laughs> oh.
What's that? What's what's going on here? What, what's this about? Flat tire? What? No. What's the tow rope? What's he what's he towing there? Oh, it's Troy's bike. What's he? What? Oh. What the? Yeah, I sleep on the job. How good is it sweeping the tragic run? Look at that. Mate, tell him to wake up. Oh, darling, let him have a kip, mate. He's been on the job since four o'clock this morning, mate. Our fifth and final day, and we're heading from Cooma to Threadbow, the long way via Bombala for a total of 406 kilometres. Well, our final day's riding. I wonder what club he's got in store all over that ride. Looks bloody great. It's been raining overnight. The track looks insanely good. Anyway, let's hook into it. How good are these conditions? Oh, they're absolutely mint. It's beautiful coming through the valleys, seeing the fog lie in the bottom of the valleys. These dirt roads are just absolutely dry. Although the foggy conditions were a pleasant change, it was great to get out into the bright sunlight again, and this time with no dust. I was loving this tragic's goodness, and I was loving being taken back to the 70s with those root sheets. It wasn't too hard to navigate, and if you stuffed up, you could always work it out. My Super 10, well, it ate up these miles. It was just a great outback tourer. Comfort, power, and solid handling in the dirt. Now, we couldn't finish this morning without a coffee stop, and this one was in the beautiful township of Candelo. Are you the youngest tragic on the right, or what? Oh, I very well could be. You could be. I think so. That was bloody brilliant, wasn't it? Oh, that was fantastic. Nice, nice moisture in the dirt, good dirt, no dust. Good roads. Gotta be happy I'm with that. It. What's going on here, Clubby? Uh, electrical. Electrical issue. An electrical issue. A small one. It'll be dealt with. Won't take long. That's good. Bro we... Broken earth wire. Are we confident about this? We are? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I've been there, done that. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time, won't be the last time. Ah, no, that's right. That's a different way of doing it, clipboard. Yeah, well that's, that's bleak, so, and he's been doing that since. But he, Adam was a pup. It's like a big widescreen TV. Yeah. Clive, I'd just like to congratulate you on that section of track. Absolutely spectacular. Awesome ride. Part of the service, the water bots today, delivered last night, so yeah, it's just been premium today. Awesome. That's right, premium. This is to be sure, to be sure. Early in the afternoon, I caught up with Dakar racer Rod Fagata and motocross legend Stephen Gall. These guys were certainly feeling that Tenere goodness as they worked their way to the top of the ridge and onto the Monaro Plains. We were only a couple of hours from Threadbow, which meant the 2019 Tenere Tragics High Plains run was coming to an end, and time to reflect on this 2,000 kilometre amble. Five days ago, the Tragics had kicked off in the Hunter Valley, rumbling through southern New South Wales before finishing in the Snowy Mountains. 
This 2,000 kilometres of safari style navigational ride had brought together a bunch of motorcycle enthusiasts from all over Australia that are tragically dedicated to the Yamaha Tenere's. Time for some bench racing and laughs, but already they've got their eye on two things. The 10 year anniversary ride next year, and the release of the much anticipated Tenere 700. It just never stops with the tragic doesn't it mate? It's all <laughs> Yeah, just hold the breath. <laughs> So Rod, what was harder, Dakar or Tenerife? <laughs> Tragics of you. Dark I mean, gee, unreal. It's gee, not the first time I've been. No, it's not, but it feels like. It. <laughs> hey Steve, how's that bloody bloody Rod's out there in the Tenerife tracks? He said he thought it was bloody harder than Dakar. He tells me. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Dakar's a little bit difficult, but today was fun. It really was fun. The skies opened up last night. The track was watered perfectly by the water truck, and we had a great time. We really did. Try and touch the ground. Precious? What time's dinner? Seven. So up back to the bar, everybody. Now there's no way in the world the captain could organise these rides without the support of his wife Tanya, aka Madam Tragic. Who all the tragics know is the real driving force behind the Tenere Tragic run. Now for those who want more Tenere goodness, keep watching as there's a great right? interview with yeah, Yamaha just... Dakar racer yeah, Rod Fagada and outtakes that will make what you smile. Happened? Clubby went to stop. Oh, and I went, what, were you going to liberate me? Yeah. Oh, and I went, yeah. All right, I'm getting out of here. What really gets you with the rolling dunes and is trying to trying to pick which ones are broken and during the middle of the day is the worst. It's um, probably similar to anyone that's ever um, been in snow and skied in the snow. Um, everything, everything looks the same. If all the dunes are the same colour, um, you can't pick a shadow and it all looks all looks the same colour of orange or if it's white sand it all looks the same. So you really until you're right there you can't see the edge. There's no shadows, there's no, no indication. So yeah what happened to me, um, I was actually struggling with the instruments a bit so I actually sort of was distracted and had my hands up trying to adjust some of the speedo caps. And um, pretty well just launched off the edge of one of these dunes, but the previous five were nice and rolling so I was sort of riding, riding along and looking over and and um, just just that little bit distracted, probably a second, and um, pretty well just launched off, launched off a dune, and um, it wasn't as fast as what what was on that, what happened to Pablo this year, but um, it was it was a fair bit higher, and um, I pretty well just sort of fell from the sky, and landed at the bottom, and just stopped at the bottom, and um, bent the handlebars, just from landing with my arms, and um, from what I understand, like I've Sort of copped a fair bit of whiplash and copped it across the chest, and I actually backed out for for a minute or so. And um, but it's pretty interesting talking to guys sort of come along a bit later on. They said, "Man, like you know, you're out there in the middle of nowhere, no tracks, and your bike's just landed at the bottom, and you're at the bottom, and it's like we could tell what happened, you know." And um, pretty scary. Like I felt like a wily coyote when I went off the edge. I was like trying to do the back, of the, you know, trying to get back to the edge. <laughs> pretty sure I had that same look too with the other eyes. <laughs> of the road books is something that I don't know how it works, but you know how they have the waypoints. Explain to everyone the waypoints, how close you've got to be, what they are, uh, how it shows up on, on your road book on the bike. Yes, it's a bit tricky. There's a couple of different styles. Um, so the, the traditional ones or, or how they were for many years is once you get within about 800 metres of, of the waypoint, your, your screen will open up and it'll actually give you an arrow 
and you basically follow the arrow in. Um, doesn't sort of count down or anything, but you just keep following in. And if, if you're on your correct metres, um, if your waypoint's at 20.5 kilometres or once you're sort of about those kilometres, it should, um, should tick over. As long as you follow the arrow in, once, uh, once you've validated the waypoint, the arrow disappears and then you're back to your road book. Um, something I've done for the last few years though is it's brought in more and more of, of um, what they call hidden waypoints, so you never get an arrow. So you basically got to follow, follow all the road book and um, hope you're in the right spot, basically. You got to be really particular with the road book. Um, so when people say, oh, you've got a GPS, you've got a compass, well, all you really get is a digital uh, compass heading. So they'll head you, say, north, which is zero degrees. In two kilometres, you then turn, say, 90 degrees. And um, you might do that for another two kilometres. And then you might turn north again. And you've got to follow those instructions pretty perfectly. And at the end of that two kilometres, which is six kilometres from when you started, there'll be a hidden waypoint. So as long as you've followed it perfectly, um, your counter of your, of your waypoints on your screen just ticks to the next one. If you've missed it, that's when you see everyone start doing circles out in the desert. Trying to find it. And some of them are pretty pretty big penalties, you know, anything from an hour to two hours. So that's sort of why guys spend a fair bit of time trying to look for them. But if you follow follow it perfectly, sort of to the to the letter, and don't follow other riders, follow your own road book and, and do it right. Um, hopefully, or normally you'd be pretty right. Can you explain to everyone what happens when you come in? Roughly what time? The better guys get in, um, what and just the the organisational aspect of what happens in the each night's bivouac, uh, what you do first, what you go to, you know, you shower up and you eat and you know recovery food, all that sort of stuff. Can you sort of break that down bit by bit for everyone? Yeah, so if you're lucky enough to probably be in the top top twenty or thirty, I suppose you, you might be finished by three o'clock, four o'clock. Depends on the road section and how big the, the day is, and. Um, you know, our team had a structure, so as soon as we come in, while it's fresh in their mind, the, the head mechanic that come over and take notes and what we want changed or what's wrong with the bike. And then, yeah, it's basically, you know, I've asked to, to chill out for a bit, um, probably grab a recovery shake or a drink or food or whatever, and and um, obviously shower and everything, and, and you get your road books at that stage. And, and the road books take a fair bit of preparation, so the previous few years, I've always done, done my own all by myself and, and most other guys, like Toby does, but some of the other guys have, have guys that help them with the road books. And just to do the road book, especially when we're colouring and, and there's a lot of stuff written in there that you have to sort of write out in English and, and, and expand on how they've written it. Um, it's nothing to spend five or six hours on, on a big road book. So that can take you into the night and sometimes during there you, you obviously have dinner and a shower and, and um, uh, we, you know, most of the big teams will, will have a masseuse or a physio, so yeah, you might get a massage or straighten out a few kinks. And but the road book takes the time, and uh, once you get that done, in the bed, you know, nine, ten o'clock, um, if all going well, then and most days you're probably up, depending on the day, three or four o'clock in the morning. You know, sort of have have breaky, put the road books in, and um, yeah, probably on the road by five or six o'clock in the morning. So. That's like say that's lucky if you're in the top 30. For the guys that start coming in at 50th, um, you know they get less time. And the guys that really struggle sort of out of the top 100, I, I don't know how they do it. A lot of days, you know, they're coming in. You know, when I'm going to bed, there's at nine o'clock. There's guys coming in from the day, and you know, yeah, they they start later than us, but they still got to be up by six o'clock, sort of thing. So by the time they do a bit of prep and work on their bikes, and some of them are Moto guys, work on the bikes through the night by themselves. You know, some of them basically by day two or three they've they're already wrecked, haven't had much sleep. So it's so quite a wide variation from what the top guys uh, go through, I suppose, um, to to the guys down the back. I think um, James Ferguson, one of the privateer guys this year, did Melly Moto, and I think his time was like 36 hours longer than Toby, and that's just in the race stage. I can't remember Toby's time, but if Toby's total race time was like 40 hours or James basically did double that, and then plus his road section. So the guy's out there twice as long as Toby, and then he comes in and works on his bike at night. So I think they're crazy, don't know why they do it. Yeah, I've got to shake my head. For the, 
for the next six months one on one with with a guy that opened a gym in, in town. So first time I've ever really trained with any, anyone um, specifically, I suppose. I've always trained by myself and uh, done what I thought was right and done a few programs that, that you and Tim Cole have come up with. But um, probably just got to the point where doing it by myself all the time, you just don't quite have the motivation to push yourself hard enough all the time. So that was pretty beneficial and um, really helped me get over my injury, I suppose. So uh, that was probably training at the gym three, four, sometimes five times a week. Um, and then so those things ramped up, just general sort of cycling and running. And um, that's off the bike, of course. And then I mixed up the bike riding a bit, just, just do a bit of sprint work, sort of 20, 20 minute, 10, 10 to 20 minute sprints and you know, five minute rest and then sort of go again. Sometimes around a motocross track, but sometimes just up sandy creeks and stuff that we have. And um, not so much, but I just sort of do long, longer rides, like out to my mum's property, so I can do a run out there, and it's 250, 300 k's so around loop, and probably probably only you know, open two or three gates, so it's a pretty good loop, pretty well. Yeah, you can be on the on the throttle pretty hard and have have a good run, but there's no point sort of doing that three times a week or anything. So. Um, it's just good to, for, for the mental capacity to, to do that three, four hour ride, full, full throttle. Um, and, and I enjoy it too. So sometimes, you know, doing the sprints and doing all the gym work, it's a bit tiring. So, so the long rides is kind of the reward. This is the part I enjoy the most. But certainly, retail, retail therapy. therapy. <laughs> and, oh, we and, well. we yeah. and we drove. And we drove. And we did pick up a couple of cars. No, no, I'll, I'll wow. Oh, Tenerace. Oh, Tenerace. Oh, thank God. We had someone else trying to pick us up earlier. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, that's crazy. Bubby always says you've got to, there's a tragic distance. It's a metre and a half. I'm just filming this. Look at this guy, Farmer Brown, over here on the hill. Chasing a sheep or something up on top of the hill there. It's like that. Wonder if it's a Yamaha. Grizzly or not, eh? It's the news reporter here. What's going on? <laughs> Bloody Michelin's. Is it flat? Yeah. Ah. Look at this. Tragically good repair, I'd say. <laughs> What's going on there? We're going to need another plug, I would say. Ooh. Do you think with that, um, that it's extra it's pressure, eh? Right? Is it a hole yeah. too big for a plug? No. It's a funny shape. Yeah, so so what Steve does to me is he go he waves like this and I'm thinking, oh I've got to go that way. And so I went off into the forest, into the effing forest, never to be seen again. But here you are. I'm back. Alright.